it's really a nice time to come around the campus to study because it's very quiet, very calm. The community did not have light. So we usually come here to study when the generator is being put off. I'm really concerned about my safety. While going home, we usually prone to so many things like snakes, scorpions. Doing assignments, we need lights. Doing presentation, we need lights. Everything, we need light. Light is the major problem in this community. I'm blessing Kariat Nazga to Kabia. I'm a member of Youth Mappers. Hello everyone, my name is Eric Tamba, Youth Mappers Regional Ambassador based in Tanzania. Youth Mappers was started because young people are an incredible engine for change in the world. Being on a map, me being able to find you on this map, I think it's the first step to think about you. When you can't see a problem, you can't address it. So being unmapped can mean you don't exist. And so what kinds of questions can you answer if you cannot first establish where is the problem? There's no development that can be sustainable with a really proper mapping of the area. Who knows better how to solve issues of climate change, of resilience, of disasters, of humanitarian need, than the people who are experiencing those things every day. What we wanted to do was create data for the world, spatial data, and one of the best platforms available is OpenStreetMap. And there are students who have been contributing to it. In fact, OpenStreetMap itself was created by a graduate student. When you can pair up somebody in one side of the world with someone on the other side of the world, and they're jointly focused on the same place on the ground because they can see it at high resolution from a satellite image, and they're both making maps of the same place together, and then you see this completed project, and you know that information is going to be used. It means something. Hi, this is Faye Andal, 29 years old, from the Philippines. Hey, I'm, I'm mapping. I'm mapping buildings in in Morovia, this particular area is susceptible to flooding. You can not only recognize your territory using a map, but also you can use the map as a tool to improve the autonomy uh, of different communities. And through Youth Mappers, I've had the opportunity to interact with some of the brightest and greatest minds in the geospatial world. Well, through Youth Mappers today, I'm a young explorer at National Geographic. I'm really excited and happy to join this program and make new friends. There are many other ways to design programming, to get information. You can hire professionals, you can hire outsiders from the country to go and collect information. However, that doesn't necessarily get at the lived experiences of people who are the beneficiaries of this. It doesn't leave a capacity and a development oh ethic. The beauty of Youth Mappers is it is not restrictive of one's background. 
I am from the geomatics background, you will have students from the humanities. As long as they have a deeper interest of investigating what remote sensing can deliver for us, you're good to go. You don't need to know all the technicalities in there. All you need to know is how to create a point, a polygon, and a line. The idea here was to create data and empower people with the skills that would be needed that they could use beyond school. I think what comes to mind when I think about mapping and data is humanitarian aid because every data or information that I collect that we put out there gives me the feeling that I'm contributing to society and the world at large. Places that are not on the map are considered non-existent. These communities that are not on the map are left out in developmental strides, either by government or non-governmental organizations. So it's quite a scary thing for communities not to be on the map. Only one in four people in Sierra Leone have access to electricity. Those who do not have access often live far from the national power grid, where it could take years to extend national grid power lines. Mini grids are a cost-effective solution to more quickly provide electricity to rural communities, but efforts are hampered by limited data. That's where youth mappers come in. Are you guys will be part of us? Can I get for the part of we? Um, okay. Well, after, good afternoon, all. Yeah. yeah, so um, I've met with some of you already, right? And um, I guess I'm new to one or two people. I'm Tommy Charles. I'm a geography graduate. I graduated from this department in 2018. Before I graduated, we, together with other colleagues, we established a mapping association known as Student Geographical Association Youth Mappers. Since then, we've been organizing what you call mapathons. Always acknowledge students to become part of these associations because, um, for one, what's most important is that you're going to get some prerequisite skills. Power grid mapping started in 2020 when Dr. Patricia Sulis got in touch with me. Hello, Patricia and team. And asked me um, if we could mobilize youth mappers to map out our lines across the country. Like, is it interconnected globally? Um, so We've been downloading field papers, teaching them how to download. By having young people and university students at the core of the power mapping project, we are engaging residents and students who live there into the solution that is being brought to them through the electrification projects. The process goes like this. Youth mappers in Sierra Leone use an online platform called Mapillai to capture street level images of electrified towns. These images show the locations of utility poles, which are connected to the national grid. Simultaneously, remote youth mappers map buildings and roads of unelectrified towns using satellite images. Buildings show where electricity currently is, and the roads identify where utility poles can be built. After the street level photos are uploaded to Mapillary, the images are verified by someone who confirms that yes, this is a utility pole, or no, this is a tree. Then the images are added to OpenStreetMap, an open source platform of data that is maintained by mappers all over the world. Once the mapped roads, buildings, and utility poles are on OpenStreetMap, the information is accessible to engineers who will use it to design and build mini grids. This will lead to more electricity access in communities across the country. My name is Amina Taba and I'm presently living with my grandparents in my 91. We don't have light at all in my house. I will have to come to campus to charge my computer to study. 
it is only here that I'll got the opportunity to go online. When I heard about these youth mappers, I have to ask, what these people do? Mapping expose you to different places, not only the country that you are in, and to learn to use other tools. For our tribe, they don't value a girl's child education. They only want men to educate. We girls, we are potentials like men. We just need the support and also the inspiration and the effort to work. Women actually involved in the mapping. They will also got the experience to lead to do better things. We have a female chapter group. I will say to ladies that power is not taken and given to you. You have to take it. You have to work for it before you got it. I landed on my own. Actually, it's phone mapping. Everywhere she maps, she makes a difference. It's incomplete to only ask one half of our society what's important to put on the map. As a woman, I feel that it has given me a voice to speak. I work as a regional ambassador, and in the technological term, women hasn't been taken as seriously. Like, okay, you're doing mapping, what kind of things you do? Like, people ask me sometimes, and when I started giving them the answers, they really understand, okay, I will do my level best so that they can grow, so that all the women in my surroundings can grow, we can grow all together. That's what I want. When we, are, we bring women and minority communities to this process of mapping, we are accepting that there are other ways to see the world and they are also value. Being part of Youth Mappers changed my career, my life in many ways. The student has the possibility to transform theory in practice. I was a mentor, but I was also learning all the time. This knowledge allowed me to be now where I am. Coming to study again, doing a PhD, I definitely can say that where I am now is a result from all these interactions that I had with youth mappers during these years. I am Kaloko Ibrahim, a student at the University of Makini. I am the president for Youth Mappers Unimark chapter. As a law student, yes, um, my aspiration is to become a lawyer, but I need to have other skills. The most important thing that we can do to society is to serve the society, to give back to communities. So that's exactly what Youth Mappers are. My community is very vulnerable. Most often, I use the Chinese lantern to study because it is the only alternative that we have to electricity. I met with Kaloko in 2018. I think my friendship with him started right from the first assignment. Before now, the universe of McKinney was not in the map. Some of us know, and uh, each of them will explain why we are here. The mapping helps to build global peace. I want to be a lawyer at the International Criminal Court. By mapping local courts, come identify how many communities we have and how many houses you have, and how many people are living in those communities, and how those people access justice. There are a few constraints, of course, as to how to go around a community. We need to engage with stakeholders so we can seek permission to map their town. 
At the start of the project, I honestly didn't know how to send out Google Meet invites. Along the line, I've picked up a lot of skills, and one is communication. Like, it has taught me to effectively communicate with district leaders, with my team members. And these are youth leaders that are actually recognized within their districts, not only their townships. So meeting with them has been very impactful. They somehow see it as an adventure. They have new digital skills that empowers them. We had to teach them on their phones. And also with the GoPro, how to capture images automatically, how to upload their sequences, and then we dispatch them. Okay, you upload by sequence. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that gives me joy and makes me feel like we're making progress as a community is when I log into Mapillary and then I zoom into some of the locations that we've been mapping and it's all green. We see a lot of images. I feel very exciting. I feel like we've done an excellent job because a few months back, we only had um, mapillary images along the highways or major roads across the country. And I have the feeling that we are just getting started. So that's how youth mappers have truly been supporting this initiative in Sierra Leone to help both mini-grid developers and government officials understand what is the existing situation of the power system and how can we, with that information, make more informed decisions on how to move forward in electrifying all of the citizens of Sierra Leone. It's global collaboration. I get to collaborate with my fellow youths around the world for a common purpose, for something that can be beneficial to the rest of mankind. Welcome to the second White House Mapathon. University students are organizing mapping initiatives that support uh, women and girls' issues. Thank you for everything and for helping us to understand that we are global citizens. My activities with Youth Mappers is one of the reasons why I was able to find a job as a lecturer in a different university. Uh, through Youth Mappers, uh, I have learned about the true power of uh, volunteerism. I was a research fellowship and through that uh, I could uh, know these communities. I did my master's degree in the Netherlands at the University of Twente. Youth Mappers and OSM uh, ensures open data map uh, open data access to everyone, that is very important. I am mapping the cross-border points in my country that have been reported as COVID-19 hotspot areas. And I would say that the situation is currently improving in such a way that there is a clear overview of the roots of COVID-19 transmission around the country. So thank you, thank you so much. Youth Mappers has given me a global experience. Every time we felt like we were stagnant, what we did was to go to the Youth Mappers website and see what are other people doing. <laughs> Even before I started to just move from one place to another, I had already virtually moved places. You may not be like traveling lots of the part of the world, but through map, through the satellite image, you can travel some of the world. Ready.
Okay, we'll <laughs> The best way to help and support students is really a program like this because training in disciplines that everybody in the world would like somebody to employ. Being a part of Youth Mappers means that I get the chance to become part of a bigger family. To be a Youth Mapper means to get to know stories of different places. Its virus disaster response projects allowed us to enhance our skills and help map the invisible be visible. I love the feeling of fulfillment whenever I realize that whatever data that we have added can be used to help others. Therefore, in that sense, being a mapper means being very human for other humans. It's not only the work of the researcher, the students, the academicians, this is also a part to involve the community, to listen to them, and to involve them into the mapping so that they can also feel empowered to that. By virtue of the fact that this data is being created on an open platform, that means that it is a public good. After this project, that data can be used and reused for many, many other purposes. And because the students were part of creating that and the communities were part of creating that, they now know that that exists, they can keep it updated, they can use it to start their own business for entrepreneurship, they can use it to navigate their way through these communities and towns. Other universities all over the world, not only geography department, start doing what the youth mappers have started doing. They have fun, they are inspired, they collaborate, they meet with new people. It's a very big boost to them and their careers ahead. Supporting youth and youth mappers is critical for the geospatial community, the OpenStreetMap community. This is our future. If you do not invest in the next generation, what's going to happen to your legacy? The initiative of Youth Mappers, they are contributing to bringing the world to a global village. Two maps, these villages are interconnected. The barriers are lifted. So making maps, building mappers, is the two sides of the same coin. We don't just build maps, we build mappers. Back then when we start, nobody know understand That God's plan what we made from the sand From the feet to the take to the stand With the hopes say we reach out the land Everybody don't dress for the occasion Let we meet at the location God in real life for move, waiting don't go around No need for come around, we're not leaving the rotation Yeah, Whoa, free with the flow, they're not get me Now we back then and talk and debate me we not go able to do so they hate me We not go able to wait till we wait till we We never had enough people to test us Whatever we do, we stay blessed I know when we arrive, we gon' turn up When we arrive, we gon' flex uh.